everyone, it's Claire. We are here in Cork, Ireland for the second episode of the Foreign Voices series. Today I'm going to be walking around finding some local street musicians and asking them about their experience playing in Cork. When I'm working on my foreign with Connie Dawson. She's also known as the Street Harpist. That's me. So where are you from originally? I'm originally from Enniskillen, County Fermanagh, okay, in the very north. Cool. And you live here now? Yeah. You're doing a tour around Ireland? Yes, I am. I'm going around Ireland in 80 tunes. Wow. So I have a list of 80 tunes named after specific places and I'm visiting every single place on that list oh, and playing amazing. the tune. Do you have music out as well? I have three albums. If people wanted to find you online, where would they go? They would go to Bandcamp. Um, dot com forward slash the street harpist. Do you have any sort of favorite moments from this tour that you've done? Yes, um, I actually I wrote about it in my blog. One of my favorite moments was at the end of my first week because I'm carrying all my gear and I'm hitching and I'm bussing and I'm like I don't have a car. Yeah. Um, one of the places is called Castle Oliver and it's up this massive, massive big hill. And after a full week of walking and trekking around, I walked up this hill and there was a view of the entire County Limerick. Mm -hmm. And the sun was setting and it was just all this beautiful golden uh, light. And I just sat there and totally forgot I was meant to be like <laughs> filming and playing music. I was like, no, yeah. I've earned this view. I'm just going to sit oh here and gosh. enjoy it. That's amazing. Have you met mostly Irish people or do you meet people from all over? All over the place. All especially over, yeah. when you're hitching, like I get picked up by locals, I get picked up by tourists. Yeah. Um, I get lots of people just coming over and being like, what What are you doing? Yeah. What is this? Do they see the harp and get really confused? Yeah, they actually, <laughs> a lot of people get confused that it is a harp because it's mm -hmm. so small. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And they come up and they're like, is it a lyre? Is it a harp? What, what is that instrument? Yeah. And how did you get into the harp? Um, I wanted an instrument for my 18th birthday mm -hmm. and I actually originally wanted a banjo. Mm -hmm. And my mom said, no. <laughs> I said, okay, well, how about a violin? And she's like, absolutely not. <laughs> Uh, so we settled on the harp because it would sound nice even while I was learning. Yeah, I know from from playing violin badly as a kid that uh, it does not sound good when you're just learning. No, no. It's, That's really cool. It's a punishment yeah. for everyone else. <laughs> I had a babysitter growing up who played the harp, like the full size. Lovely. It was really, really amazing. I remember just being a kid thinking like, how do you begin to learn the harp? I mean, like anything <laughs> else, I teach people yeah. and it's you just oh, sit down. Yeah. Use... That's so yeah. cool. That's awesome. Start with something easy. Is there anything else you want to add or anecdotes from your tour at all? <laughs> oh my god, the tour, the tour. Read the blog. The blog. www.thestreetharpist.com because there's so much. People are like, hey, so what happened on your tour? And I'm like, everything? Yeah, it's hard to remember, <laughs> yeah. I got trapped in a field with a bunch of cows. That was interesting. I was playing in a field in Ockram and I didn't realize there were cows in the field. And yeah. I looked up and I had like, 25 cows in a semicircle just watching me play. That's amazing. That's they like the best audience ever. They were, they were fascinated, but I'm terrified of cows. <laughs> so there's footage of me somewhere like, ah, uh. just playing away and you can't see the cows, but yeah. they're there watching That's intently. amazing. Wow. Well, I will link everything down below so you guys can check out her music and her blog. Thank you so much. You're so, so great to meet you. You too. Yeah. Where else have you played? Um, around the country, 
the major cities, minor towns, whatever, mm -hmm. provincial towns. And how would you say Cork compares to other places that you've busked? Uh, well, Cork is really good because it's very friendly. Mm -hmm. um, the locals are friendly, my own people. Um, tourists are brilliant. I think they kind of get a good vibe out of the city because the city is friendly anyway. So they kind of, they kind of get into that environment fairly quick, you know. And yeah. Irish people are friendly anyway. So. Yeah. How did you so. first get into busking? Uh, I wanted to start gigging years ago when I was younger. Uh, around the, the end of my thirties, I just wanted to go back to music. I said the best way is just go and busk for a while and I started gigging in and picking up gigs here and there. When you busk, do you normally play your own songs or covers or a mix of both? Oh, it's a mix of both. Yeah. Uh, covers and originals, yeah. So I have a lot of American stuff actually, by the way. Yeah. Because there's an awful lot of American music out there. I love the quirkiness of the American music as well, the kind of slight quirk in it, you know. And then you'd have songs like the yeah, Irish Ballad or stuff from all over Europe, whatever, mm -hmm. that you'd learn. And then some of my old influences from years ago, like the Pesh Mode and the Simple Minds and yeah. 80s bands when I was growing up. And a lot of the writing then is inspired by learning other people's songs. Mm -hmm. What they might call ripping them off, but you're not really <laughs> ripping them off. But you're just getting new ideas. I think the, the more the more cover versions you learn, the more you have a better chance of writing new songs. Yeah. So if someone was coming to Cork and they wanted to hear some live music, besides in the streets, where would you recommend people go? The Crane Lane which is in the centre of the city, near Oliver Plunkett Street. The mm -hmm. Oliver Plunkett Bar, um, the Old Oak, off the top of my head, uh, Reardon's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Reardon's Mill, and anywhere you can find it, really. I yeah. Suppose. Rob Roy would be another place, actually. It's all over the city, really. Yeah. Like, yeah. As long as you go look for it, yeah. Do you have favourite busking spots that you always stick to? Yeah, mainly around Oliver Plunkett Street, and probably the GPO, you know, mm -hmm. you know that area. That would be my, my my favorite spot anyway. Lastly, do you have any advice for maybe younger up and coming musicians who are interested in either coming to Cork and playing or just generally interested in busking? Uh, just go do it. Yeah. Uh, and have fun. If people want to find your music online, where should they go? Uh, YouTube, Seamus and the Prophets. Uh, that's it. I will link all of Seamus's music down below, so make sure you check him out. And thank you so much. Not about it, love. Brendan Smith. He is originally from Wicklow, but he lives here now. So how long have you been busking? Uh, since the start of this summer, so three months or so. So it's super yeah. new still. So. Yeah, pretty new, yeah. Have you busked anywhere other than Cork or just here? Just Cork. Yeah. Everywhere else, they need a license. Really? Well, so you like don't Dublin need a... and Galway, I think you need a license. And you don't here at all? Cork, so. Even if you're amplified? Uh, no, even if you're amplified. Interesting. Because yeah. in New York, where I'm from, you definitely need for amplified music, you definitely need a, a permit. Good to know if I'm going to New York. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How long have you been playing guitar? Uh, two and a bit years. Okay, nice. I uh, just started in second year college and yeah. kept it up, really enjoyed it. Who are some of your favorite artists to cover when you're busking? Uh, generally do Oasis, Ed Sheeran, um, a real big mix of stuff kind of thing. I think I know mostly Oasis, but like, um, Cranberries, Fleetwood Mac, a bit of Fleetwood Mac as well, awesome, yeah. yeah. Some of that, yeah. I really only learn songs I find that I know will work busking, that yeah. a lot of people know. Yeah. But I suppose the genre of music I, I would be kind of rock. I need electric guitar, I love one. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a whole other setup for busking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, have you had any interesting run ins with just people listening to you busk in Cork? Um, a few. The best is when you get kids. Yeah. Because uh, you sometimes get a bunch of kids dancing around. It's yeah. great. It feels really good and stuff. And the parents are kind of them forced to give you a bit of money. Right, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> the kids are the best. Um, uh, I, came, I went out late one night and had a very drunk Scottish guy belting out Oasis with me. He got, he got me like 15 quid because he was just grabbing people around. And everyone started singing around. It was great fun. <laughs> Do you have favorite spots in the city to busk? Honestly, here or where that guy up there is now is, <laughs> is the best one. Honestly, weekdays aren't great anyway. Mm -hmm. Generally, like, I might, if I'm lucky, I'll make 15 quid kind of on a weekday. Yeah. But uh, generally weekends, uh, Saturday, gotcha. do really well. When you come out to busk, how long do you plan to stay, typically? An hour and a half, two hours. Okay. Yeah, I've gone for longer, but usually around that. Yeah. Just always checking the weather. Yeah. I just make sure see if it's going to rain that yeah. day. And 
you ever hide out in a cafe for a few minutes and then yeah, come back well, out? Yeah, I've done that, especially when they're in there. If it starts drizzling, I'll just go and sit in the cafe for a while and then hopefully it'll clear up. Do you have any advice for other people who are interested in coming to Cork and performing or busking here? Yeah, if you're going to do it, it's definitely daunting, but like if you make a mistake or whatever, a person who hears is gone in five yeah. seconds, so it doesn't really matter. And uh, people enjoy it, I think, and it's just a nice thing to do. Yeah. Um, it's, no sh it's no shame. Like, if you have a voice, you can play guitar or any instrument, go for it. Well, thank you so much. No problem. So great to meet you. Yeah, you too. And best of luck. Thanks. I'm here with Jim from Nudie Boy Nature, and he has been living in Cork for the past eight years, you said? Yes. So how long have you been busking? Um, well, I started busking when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. and I guess I just did that for a few years, like, until you start getting gigs. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. I do it on and off now. I wouldn't do it too much because I try and, I mean, you just try and get gigs. But yeah. Actually, on sunny days, it's just nice to go out. It's a nice totally, way to spend yeah. the day, like, you know, practice mm -hmm. the trade or whatever. Would you say it's a good way for, I mean, obviously it was for you, but just generally, is it a good way for new artists to kind of get used to performing? Def yeah, definitely. Uh, especially if you're by yourself as well. Mm -hmm. It's also nice when people stop and kind of pay attention to them. Yeah, absolutely. Have you noticed anything specific about the busking in Cork? I don't know. I, I don't think... No, it's like it's what I what I'd be used to seeing right. anyway. Like, I mean, I like I, I lived in one place for twenty years, and then mm -hmm. I lived here for or eighteen years, and then I lived here for eight years. And mm -hmm. um, and yeah, no, I think it's kind of the same. Yeah. Just try and make some little. I mean, you're either kind of playing just acoustic or something by yourself, yeah. or you're trying to make a little scene like you know mm -hmm. I know when you we used to go out busking with like a double bass player oh wow you gotta make people stop and look somehow yeah. sometimes it's a whole operation if you yeah. like upright bass and everything yeah 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 what are some of your favorite places to play in Cork <laughs> uh, Charlie's Charlie's would be one of the main spots the Abbey Tavern the people that I play with kind of most mostly we all have been playing there for about five years every Monday we do that like that kind of music mm -hmm. like country music so do you meet a lot of other musicians when you're playing out either gigging or busking they'd all be my friends like mm -hmm. people that you play with I suppose you can get asked to like cover things or whatever you yeah know, just be like hey they need some here they need some there but yeah general like that's how I meet most that's how I met most of the people that I know now it's from part. gigs yeah yeah, yeah. Or like might have met them in college and then didn't didn't really hang around with each other for a while and then a couple of years like down the line everybody's doing the same thing. Yeah. So like, ah, mad. Yeah. So that's good. Like you know you get to know people a bit better than mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. college situation. Did you study music in college or nah. what'd you study? Uh, philosophy and art history. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. It was deadly. In fairness. Do you yeah. think that played into your artistry at all or just totally separate? I know definitely. One of my favorite bands or artists, Area Pink's Area Pink's Haunted Graffiti or Area Pink. Mm -hmm. He was kinda into all this I don't know, you know, the, there's this weird thing like called hauntology. It's about like I don't know, music and ghosts and how That's awesome. It's it's actually mental, like it's really, really deadly. So I got I like I did a presentation and stuff on that in, yeah. in, co in college and I got to be like, Hey look at Area Pink, yeah, everybody. Yeah. If people want to find your music online, where should they go? <laughs> There's a couple of songs on SoundCloud. Mm -hmm. Can't really say much about it. Like, you know, I didn't... Like I was saying, I haven't got too much stuff recorded, but mm -hmm. kind of st getting the band going and getting gigging and, and kind of just seeing what happens. Because I was doing it originally. I was recording everything by myself. Oh, okay. And then it was kind of weird when... 
and I was kind of a bit worried about getting a band for ages. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like, uh, who's gonna, you know, who's gonna want to it's do stressful, it or something? Like, yeah. yeah. So now it's kind of the last year anyway. We did a, a few gigs, and it's definitely a lot different now. Yeah. Go to a gig if I do one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's loads of stuff going on in Cork all yeah. the time. That you can't even go to everything. Like, yeah. To, you don't get to see most things because there's just so much there's so much yeah. yeah it is interesting to me coming I mean, obviously from new york which is a huge city and so definitely relate to the whole like you can't do everything yeah 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 but it's really phenomenal that there's such an elaborate extensive music scene here even mm. though it is kind of a smaller city mm. yeah it's mad the amount of things and the quality of things that yeah. people are doing is unbelievable and that's the other thing that you're pointing out is it's not just that there's so much music it's that there's so much good music oh yeah no like really really yeah. good people because it doesn't matter how much music there is if it's not good music. Yeah. <laughs> is there any advice you would give to musicians out there that are maybe interested in coming to Cork either to see live music or want to get involved in busking or anything like that? Um, I just, I'd recommend it. It's yeah. a good place. Yeah, there's places like Plugged or the Roundy there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Trisco. Um, they do deadly stuff. Sorry, that's not Plugged anymore. <laughs> that used to be Plugged. Oh, really? But it is a Trisco. Yeah, check out those places, uh, is what I'd say, and check out Charlie's, um, yeah. the Abbey Tavern. Thank you so much, this is really great. Yeah. When you come to Cork, keep a lookout for Jim. <laughs> that was such a fun day. Thank you again to all the musicians that allowed me to include them in this video. It was so cool to learn more about the Cork music scene from a busker's point of view. And thank you to everyone who watched the video. Make sure you subscribe. You can even click the bell notifications button to make sure that you never miss a video. See you then. Foreign